In this video, we will take a look at the Grand Stream Web RTC application, Wave. We will highlight the supported features and demonstrate how to set up and use Wave for your calls and meetings. Grandstream Wave is an application that offers real-time voice and video communications. The user-friendly interface of Wave enables users to easily create, schedule, and join conference calls with the capability to share presentation, transfer files, and chat during an active call or conference call. Wave is available as a client for desktop and mobile devices such as iOS and Android, or you can simply run it from a web browser such as Chrome and Firefox. Wave app and desktop clients are designed to work with UCM 6300 series. You can connect your Wave to the UCM 6300 series using the UCM RC URL or the UCM IP address. For remote users, connecting through the UCM RC is more convenient thanks to the automatic NAT firewall traversal, which is basically a secure tunnel between GDMS and the UCM so there is no need to configure the router or firewall with port forwarding compared to if you want to use the public IP address of the UCM. To make provisioning easy for users, UCM 6300 series supports the option to email QR code and information needed for WAVE to connect to the UCM. This is an example of a WAVE welcome email that the UCM sends to a user. It includes the QR code for WAVE app and the settings for WAVE web and desktop client. The email will include the private IP address of the UCM and the FQDN of the remote connect. Just keep in mind that the UCM RC FQDN will be included in the email if you have your UCM added to your GDMS account and is assigned a UCM RC plan including the free trial plan. Otherwise it will include the public IP address of the UCM if that one is configured under the HTTP server wave settings. So here it includes the extension number together with the login password. The login password is not the SIP password it's the user password that you can modify under the extension configuration page. To log into WAVE, so I'm going to use the UCM RC FQDN. So let's go ahead and click on it. So when you click on the link, you basically open the link using your browser and that gives you access to WAVE web where you can enter the extension number together with the login password that is included in the email. You can also download the WAVE client from here so that you can have it installed on your computer. I already have it installed on my computer, so I'm just gonna bring it up here. To log into WAVE client, you simply copy the link from your browser, paste it here. The extension is 1000. Then I'm gonna type in the login password. So when you log in for the first time, it's gonna prompt you to check the audio input and output. So I'm just gonna close this one. So when you log into Grandstream Wave, if you click on this icon, it's gonna show the status that is currently displayed to other users. So for example, your extension 1000 now is currently showing online. So all the other users using Wave, they're gonna see you online. From here, you can change the status to either busy, do not disturb, appear away, or appear offline. All these status types except for dnd when you enable them you will still be able to receive and make calls as well as receive chat messages however when you change it to dnd if someone tries to call the extension 1000 they will go straight to voicemail if you go to call history you will see that the call was rejected by the application because it's using dnd uh, you can change the status back here to online or you can simply click on disable dnd just by clicking on the same icon you can have access to your qr code in case you want to use the wave app on your android and ios device the call section on the grandstream wave gives us access to the call history or the recent calls so this is the list of all the calls that were made to and from extension 1000 it shows the timestamp or when the call was made or received uh, as well as the call duration i can select one of these entries then i can go to these options on the right side i can send a message to that user i can initiate a video callback or an audio callback from here we also get access to our voicemail messages if there is a new and red message you will see a red 
icon here with the number of unread messages i can listen to the voicemail just by clicking on the play then it's going to play on my computer so i can listen to it i can also initiate a video callback or an audio callback or simply send a text to that user i can download the voicemail in case i want to save it or send it as an email attachment to another user and just keep in mind that when you delete a voicemail from here that message will be deleted from all the devices that are currently using uh, extension 1000 to make a call we go to the dial pad so if I need to call extension 1009 I just start entering the digits the grand stream wave will search into the entries in the contact directory and provide me with the, the uh, search results and then from here I can just select extension 1009 so starting with the WAVE version 1.19.11, active calls and meetings open on a separate window that you can adjust and drag from here. And one of the control options available during an active call is the audio wizard uh, to test or change your audio settings. If the microphone is connected properly, you should see the volume bars move when speaking into the microphone. It is also important to note that Grandstream Wave is compatible with Microsoft Teams compatible headsets. So if you have a headset that supports call control and works with Microsoft Teams, you should be able to use it with Wave. You can also use it with any headset that supports standard call control functionalities. You can change the background of your camera. So in case you don't wanna show your uh, camera, I can just choose one of these background uh, images. Uh, and from here, I can just send a request to convert the call into a video call. So now the video call is active with the remote uh, user. I can put the call on hold and hold it. Uh, I can use the keypad in case I need to dial some uh, digits like a DTMF digit. Uh, I can share a presentation with that user, something that I'm gonna uh, show you while we go to the meetings uh, option here. If we go under more, there's the option to transfer the call to another user or you can invite other users to join this uh, call. To hang up a call, you simply click on end. Users can join, manage and schedule meetings by going to the meetings section on the left pane. So when you go to this section, it will provide you with the upcoming meetings as well as the meetings in which this extension has participated in. So every meeting that is created on the UCM will be assigned a meeting ID and you have the option to configure a password in case you want to protect that meeting with a password. There is also the host code and the meeting host has a certain privilege that other participants don't have such as the capability to mute and unmute participants, turn on and turn off video for participants and assign the role of the host to another participant as well as the privilege to remove participants from a specific meeting. So when a user wants to join a meeting, they simply go to the join meeting option here. There are two pieces of information that the user needs to enter and one of them is the meeting ID or the link. If the meeting is protected with a password, then you must enter the uh, password. If the password is not required, you can just skip this option and then click on join the meeting. To schedule a meeting using your Wave app, we go to the option that says schedule. Give it a name, a subject. If this is a sales meeting, I can just call it sales. Then I can set the time. Uh, if this is, for example, for Monday the 5th, then I can select the time. I can schedule this meeting from 9 to 10 a.m. and then click on schedule. If the sales team hosts their meeting on Monday at 9 a.m., I can basically uh, change that one to weekly so that every week these users will be invited to join that meeting. If I need to protect this meeting with a password, I just enter the PIN number and there the invitees. This is where I include the email addresses of the participants that I would like them to join the meeting. And when you expand the host settings, it just gives you the host name, which is extension 1000. 
uh, this is the email associated with that extension and also this is the host code so if you want to be the host of the meeting you need to log in with this uh, pin number if you go to advanced settings there are some other options here and one of them is enabled by default which is allow participants to invite basically when you invite participants to join a meeting they will have the option to invite other uh, participants that were not uh, invited from here so when I click on ok the UCM will schedule that meeting then it will send an email to the invitees and this is an example of the invitation that a user would receive when a meeting is scheduled on the UCM it tells you the time and the date the time zone uh, who is the host and this is the room so basically this is the meeting ID in case somebody want to join the meeting using that option join meeting they can simply copy and paste that meeting ID in there. Wave meetings on the UCM provides you with two options. If a user is inside the network, they can click on join the meeting from inside the corporate. Basically, they use the private IP address of the UCM. If remote users, then they can choose the second option, which allows them to join the meeting remotely. For the participants that are using a Wave app on their iOS and Android devices, they can simply um, scan the QR code and they can join the meeting automatically. The only thing they need to do is just enter their name. And of course, uh, after you create the meeting, uh, the meeting will be listed here. So you can always have access to that meeting. Uh, you can edit the information regarding that meeting. You can cancel the meeting. So in addition to having those meetings as a list, you can always use the calendar option, which display those meetings in a calendar so that you can keep track of the upcoming meetings. If you need to start a meeting immediately, you can use the option of meet. Now you can change the subject. If this is the weekly meeting for sales, I can just enter the name. Then I can include the email address of the user that I would like to invite to that meeting. So when using the Grandstream Wave uh, firmware version 1.19.11, you will get a separate window when you start a meeting the same way we saw with the calls so from here once you start the meeting of course when you are speaking you're going to see this green uh, frame to indicate the participant that is currently speaking in the meeting uh, there is the option here where you can look at the chat or you can start the chat so from here you can send the messages if you need to send specific message to a person because there's no one uh, in the meeting right now but once you do that it's going to show you the list of users that you would like to send the message to uh, you can also send files by using this uh, attachment icon at the end you can download the chat conversation of the group chat so you can save it uh, next we have the participants so if we click on this one here it's going to show us the participants that are currently in the meeting so i am the only one in the meeting right now uh, the invitees I have this user who has not joined the meeting yet so if I need to invite another user to join the meeting I just include their uh, extension number then I come here and send the invite so once you click on the invite if the user has wave uh, installed in their computer they will get a notification to join the meeting so now I have two participants in the meeting. If, if I need to invite more users to join the meeting, I can just simply click on this arrow and then click on invite. And from here, I can select which uh, extensions I would like to invite uh, to that meeting and then click on the invite. So now my phone is ringing. So now we have three users in uh, the meeting. I can and mute and mute the users I can send them a direct uh, message or I can transfer the role of the meeting host to that specific user so this user will become the host of the meeting or I can simply uh, remove that user screen share during a meeting is a feature that is also included in wave so to share your screen it's pretty easy all you have to do is come here and click on this 
button which will bring you up to this prompt to select the screen or the application that you would like to share so let's say I have this PowerPoint that I would like to share with the users I can simply click on it so one thing that you might have noticed is that when sharing an application there is this red frame that is surrounding the application you're currently sharing with other users and this is good so that you can avoid sharing private information or private document during a meeting in case you want to switch to another document i can just simply click on uh, switch share source and then i can go ahead and select another document so if i need to use the whiteboard i can just select the whiteboard i can expand the uh, screen and from here i can do my drawings there's also the the possibility to add an image in the background so that you can draw on it uh, another feature also that is supported using the uh, whiteboard is the possibility to allow other users to draw at the same time and on the same background image at the end you can download it so you can save it or email it to other users you can erase whatever uh, you've been drawing on that uh, image so in addition to screen share and the whiteboard for drawing let's look at the other options available under here uh, so here there's the option to mute all users you are now muted and then I can end you to myself just by clicking on this icon. Uh, I can allow uh, other users to override the host mute. So right now, if I mute these users, they can't unmute themselves. But if I wanna give them this privilege, I can check this option uh, here. Uh, next, we have the option to lock meeting. And basically, lock meeting, you would use it uh, in an example where you send an invite to four users and you notice that all of them are in the meeting you can just lock the meeting, the meeting. Now, now locked. you can just lock the meeting so that nobody else can join that meeting so when the meeting is over and you want to end it you just come here and click on end so once the meeting ends of course if you go to meeting history then you will see the meeting uh, included in the list of meetings so when you click on that one for the first time you will notice that there are no rooms and that's because we need to have some rooms created on the UCM before we come here and start using the public rooms so let me go ahead and log into my UCM so I can create some conference rooms so I'm logged into my uh, UCM so to create some conference rooms we go to the core features multimedia meetings and as you can see, I don't have any room. So all I need to do is add and then assign it a name. If this is for sales, I can just assign it sales. The privilege level is useful when you try to call other users. So for example, um, if you have an outbound route set with a national privilege and you want to make an external call, the room needs to have the same privilege or higher privilege than the one assigned to the outbound uh, route to be able to make calls to external uh, numbers if you only need to call internal numbers you can just leave that one set to uh, internal so I'm gonna change it to national so this is the same feature that we talked about earlier because the host has the privilege to mute and unmute participants in a meeting you can check this option in case you want to provide participants with the option to unmute themselves uh, if you want to record all those uh, meetings hosted on this public room you can record the audio you can record the video uh, you just have to be careful with the amount of storage you have available on the ucm or on the external uh, storage audio and then here if you go to file manager then you can select where you want to record those uh, audio recordings so i'm just going to save and apply so now if i go back to my wave and i go to the public room you will see that there is a meeting that has been added in this uh, section if i want to reserve that uh, public room for my meeting i can do that just by uh, selecting the time and then click on uh, schedule so another thing to keep in mind is that the number of participants and the number of video feeds depends on the UCM model that you're going to be using. Another feature offered by Wave is chat, which allows you to send messages to an extension or a group of extensions. 
There are several ways how you can message a team member. We can do that from the calls section by going to one of these entries and then click on the chat icon to start chatting with that specific user. Uh, the other option is to go to contacts section, look for the contact that you would like to send a message and then click on the chat icon or simply go to the chats section and then use this icon and then it will provide you with the enterprise directory and from here we can choose the extension that we would like to uh, send a direct message if you misspell a word wave will underline it in red so by simply right clicking it i can correct it and send the correct word when using a ucm remote connect paid plan you will have access to end-to-end encryption when sending direct messages or transferring file directly to another user. End-to-end -end encryption is not available when using the free plan. To start a group chat, we use the same icon, which is start chatting. We click on it and then we select the group of extensions that we would like to include as members of that group chat. Then click OK. We can always change the name by clicking on the, on the group chat name. Then we can change it to sales for example if you need to know the members in this group you can always click on the more icon then here which will show you the the users that are members of the group chat from here i can delete any extension that i would like to remove from that group chat and to send a message you simply type in your message you can also transfer files by clicking on the file icon here and then I can select the file that I would like to send. Uh, just keep in mind when sending files using WAVE, the file should not exceed 50 megabytes. And also when typing messages, you can create messages with up to 5,000 characters. So in addition to sending messages and transferring files, I can also paste uh, images and send them as images and this applies to messages files and images just by going to this icon if i expand it in addition to share and then reply to that image or basically reply with an emoji there's the option where you can download it and share it so in case i want to share this image with other users then I can go to the enterprise directory and then I can select one user or a group of users and share that image with them. Uh, you can do the same thing in case you have a file and you would like to share it with other users. You just go to that icon, select the group of uh, users that you would like to share it with and then click on OK and it will send it as an individual message to each user as you can see here another option that is available on the wave app only is the option where you can send an audio file you can record yourself and then you can send that file as a message to other users this option is not available from the wave web and wave desktop if you need to uh, mute the chat notification you can do that by simply clicking on mute if you want to hide a chat entry from your chat section uh, you can use this option which is hide chat uh, there's another option here pin to top this is in case you want to prioritize a specific a chat entry or group of chat entries so that you can always have them at the top as a way to manage your chats and prioritize them some other options available on this side uh, so if i go here there's the option where i can unpin the chat or pin the chat i can mute the same option that was available from here or i can go to the chat history so if i'm looking for a specific word i can just type it in here and click on this uh, enter icon so that wave will find all the chat messages that include that specific uh, string because there's no uh, messages going on here that's why it couldn't find any messages there's also the option of file from here that user can have access to all these files that have been exchanged with that user uh, there's also the option where you can add another member to join you in that chat and here you have the option to make an audio or video call to uh, this user so i would go back to the group chat and go over some options here so if you go to the group chat there's the option here where you can start a video call and 
start a meeting with all these users so that you can initiate a video conferencing or an audio conferencing call with all these uh, users here you have some other options if we go to group settings by default when you create group chat on wave all the users will be able to add other users to the group so if you want to restrict that privilege to the host you can uncheck this box so only the host that created this group chat will be able to invite other users to join this group chat there's also the option here where you can change the group owner. I can simply select the user and then click OK so that uh, Anthony Wilson in this example will become the owner of this uh, group chat. By default, all data chat will be saved uh, using the internal storage of the UCM. But if you have the UCM added to your GDMS account, you can purchase the Cloud IAM service so that you can configure the UCM to store all the chat data on the Cloud IAM storage. The contact section on Wave displays all UCM extensions, LDAP contacts, and external contacts that have been added to the UCM 6300 series. To have access to all contacts entries, you click on all, then it's gonna display all the contacts available on the UCM. You also have the option to create a list of favorite contacts. So this one is empty. If I wanna add a contact to my favorites, I just click on the contact and click on the favorite. So once I select this option, if I go back now to favorites, you will see that this contact has been added Extended contacts are available from the UCM LDAP service. So these contacts are available to the user based on the privilege level that have been assigned to that user. By default, all users have access to all external and internal contacts entries uh, configured on the UCM. The UCM administrator can assign user the group of contacts to which he or she can have access from WAVE. So to understand how that works, I will switch to the web UI of the UCM. So contact management is available under the contact menu. And you have three options here. There's the contact management, the department management, and the privilege management. If we click on contact management under the extensions contacts, these are all the internal extensions created on the UCM. So they will automatically sync with this page. In case you want to unsync or remove uh, an extension from being available uh, through Wave, you simply come here, you select the extension and you delete the extension. So let's go ahead and demonstrate, for example, with extension 1004, if I delete this extension, and I go back to the list of extensions available under extension, this is what happens. You will see that extension 1004 now is showing not sync. That means this extension will not be available in the contact section for Wave user. To revert that change, you can simply come here, select the extension, and under basic settings, you look for sync contact, check this box, then save the change if we go back here you will see that now it is sync and if i go back to contacts then contacts management you will see that the extension 1000 is available again under the extension uh, contact one more thing to notice here is that you can't add contact here so there's no option to add them in addition to uh, internal extensions if you want to add other contacts you can use the external contacts and here you can just simply click on add then enter the phone number, first name, last name, and the department. I'm gonna explain the department and the privilege level in a moment. So I already have one contact created here, and this is the one that's gonna have the icon remote contact next to it. So every time you add any contact under the external contacts page, it will have this icon next to it so that you know that it's a part of uh, this configuration page. The ones that have extended contacts uh, were actually synced from the LDAP service. So if I go to system settings, LDAP server, 
LDAP phone book, you will see that I have another LDAP phone book that I created uh, on the UCM. If I click on edit, so these are the same contact information uh, that you will uh, see on your wave. So this list matches whatever we have here. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to the contacts menu and under external contacts, you have the option to import and export contact. If you don't know how to create a CSV template to import it uh, on the UCM, you can simply create a contact, export it, uh, and then use the same template and upload it with your information and just come back here and import the file. So you have two options here uh, concerning duplicate external contacts. You can either skip them or you can update the ones that you already have. If we go to the department management, uh, by default, all the contacts are using the root directory of uh, the UCM. If I need to create a department on the UCM, I could just give it a name. For example, uh, let's call this one sales. And the upper level department is going to be, of course, the root directory, because that's the only one we have when you start configuring the departments for the first time. If you leave it this way, that means users in this department will have access to all the contact in the UCM. If I want to restrict it to this department, then I can select department and sub department, then click OK. And now we have a department that is created so after you create the department then you can go here and click on add users then you you can select the extensions that will be part of that department i can select for example this five you can also choose from the list of external contacts and add them to cells i can select that one for example then apply and change and next to it here it's going to show you the number of contacts in that uh, department. If you need to create a sub department, then you just click on this icon here. All right, so I'm just going to close that one. So if I go ahead again and edit, uh, so this is the sales department and we assigned it the privilege. So that means users in this department can only access the contacts in the sales department because that's the privilege that we chose here. Also because I have the extension 1000 uh, in the sales department. So if I bring my wave here, uh, if I go to the enterprise network, I, I only have access to the contact entries that I added to the sales department. I can customize this by going to the privilege management and change those uh, privileges. So for example, if I want this extension 1000 to have access to these contacts plus some other contacts, what I need to do is go to privilege management and then create a new privilege. You can call that one, for example, the sales manager. So we're gonna add all the contacts in the sales department. And as you can see, once you add the extensions to sales department, you're not gonna have them here. So they are gonna be grouped as a department. Then I can add other extensions if I want to. Let's say these are also salespeople, but they work in a different region. I can also select these. So if I go save and apply the change, and if I go back to my extension, 1000. So if I go here, this extension is a member of the sales department as we configured it earlier. But instead of using the department contact privilege, I'm gonna uncheck this box. Something that you're gonna notice, which is when I check this box, this one gets disabled automatically. So I'm gonna uncheck this one and then go to the contact view privilege, then save and apply. And if I go back now to wave, you will see that I have uh, access to more contacts. I have the six contacts in the sales department, plus the ones that I added to the privilege management. The Grandstream Wave has some additional features available under the application dashboard. Um, concerning the personal data and the additional features, when you click on any one of these, it's going to take you to the user portal. So let's go ahead and click on CDR, for example. 
so when I do that, it's going to take me to the user portal of extension 1000. And from here, you can have access to the user information, account settings, the extension uh, settings, which is 1000, and some personal data like voicemail, messages, and how to customize voicemail greetings. There is a video on the Grandstream YouTube channel that demonstrates how to navigate the user portal. So I'm going to close that one for now. So in addition to the personal data and the additional features, there's the smart devices that you can integrate with the Grandstream Wave. The first one is the door system that allows you to integrate the Grandstream Wave with GDS door station. So I can name this one front gate and the extension that the GDS door station will be using, let's say it's going to be using extension 1008. I can just call that one again, front gate one. The password is the pin number that you configure on the GDS door stations. So the password must match the remote pin that you configure on the GDS 3700 door stations. So when you do that, basically, if there is a call coming from the front gate door station with extension 1008, Grandstream Wave during the active call will provide you with an icon that you can simply click on it to unlock the door without the need to enter the pin each time you want to unlock the door station, as you can see in this image right here. So the next option is the monitor. And if I click on it, you will notice that there is nothing configured here because this feature works with the device management on the UCM. We also made a video about device management. It is available on the Grandstream YouTube channel and it explains in detail how to set an IP camera with the UCM. So once you configure that one, if you go to the monitor, then you will be able to have access to those IP cameras from your Grandstream wave the other option is the call device cti so when you click on add it provides you with the list of devices that are supported so before we set that up we need to go to the ip phone so i have an ip phone here that i will log into and this is a grp 2615 so if i want to use the cti with a desk phone and the cti mode basically allows the user to manage calls received on the desk phone through the Wave desktop client. For example, if you receive a call on your desk phone, you can choose to answer it or reject it using your Grandstream Wave. So this is a nice way to sync those call functionalities between your Grandstream Wave and your desktop phone. So to enable CTI on the physical phone, uh, we go to network settings, and then advanced settings and we scroll all the way down. So here are the CTI settings. Just make sure you check this one and then you select the account that you wanna use with the Grandstream Wave. So apply the changes. Then we can go back to the Grandstream Wave and then we enter the IP address of the physical phone. Then we can start the pairing process. So once you start the pairing process, the phone will display code. So I'm gonna copy that code that is currently displayed on the LCD screen, which is 4468. All right, so the pairing finished successfully. I'm just gonna click OK. So if there's an incoming call to my GRP, I will be able to answer that call from my Grandstream. So to make the CTI work with the GRP or GXP phone, first of all, you need to make sure that the computer and the IP phone are in the same subnet and you must have the same account on both of them so for example if i'm using extension 1000 here the desk phone needs to use extension 1000 as well so if there is an incoming call i can answer from either the grandstream wave or the ip phone there are so many other features that sync automatically with the uh, desk phone for example if i change my status here to dnd the same thing will happen on the desk phone. So the phone will also go on DND. If I disable DND from the desk phone or from the wave, it will uh, get disabled on both of them. 
A new module that was added to Wave application is the operator panel, which works as a management interface of a group of extensions, ring group, car queue, parking lot, and voicemail group. This module will appear on your Wave application only if you have the operator panel on the UCM configured for that extension. So you will need to reach out to the UCM super admin and configure the operator panel for your extension. So let me go back to my UCM so I can show you how to configure the operator panel on the UCM. So the operator panel uh, configuration is available from the UCM and the core features operator panel. As you can see, I already have extension 1000 uh, configured for that. That's why I was able to see that module on my Wave application. To configure that for another extension or a group of extensions, you just click on Add. But let's go ahead and look at the settings that we have configured under the extension 1000. So I'm going to go ahead and edit. Let's assume this is for the manager and we're going to select extension 1000. We can add more extensions if we need to, if they all going to have the same permissions. The management module, these are the extensions that they can monitor and have access to. So I selected the five extensions that are in the sales department. I can add more extensions if I want to. I can add the ring groups that I would like to monitor together with the voicemail groups and the car queue and the parking lot. So let's go ahead, save and apply these changes. So I will switch back to my wave. All right. So if I click on the operator panel, a new window will open. So this window gives me the permission to monitor the ring group, car queue, parking lot, voicemail group. So if there is an incoming call to any of these, I will be able to see it from the control module. So let's go ahead and make a call to uh, to the car queue, for example. So if there is an incoming call to the car queue 6501, I will be able to monitor that call from here and also answer it from here and hang up the call. So let's just go ahead and hang up this call from here. So when someone parks a call, one of these parking lots, like the range that we have selected, I will be able to retrieve that call from here or I can hang up the call from here. So let's just go ahead and hang up this call from the call park. The operator panel also allows me to check the status of other extensions. So for example, this is my account. Let's go ahead and monitor extension 1002. Uh, so this extension is idle. It has a new voicemail. I can also check the status and how many voicemails are in the inbox. So if someone calls this voicemail group, I will be able to see it from the control panel. Uh, you can add as many ring groups as you have available from the UCM as well as the call queues and the voicemail groups. You can also add more extensions. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. And I'll see you in the next video. If you follow these troubleshooting steps and still are experiencing issues, Grandstream Networks has a support team dedicated to assisting you with any issues you may have with our product. You can access Grandstream support by going to helpdesk.grandstream.com.